spiritual family to AFG Ministry, a faithful God ministry. I am Alicia, founder and pastor here. I am extremely excited and glad you are here today. This is indeed a blessing. Like our welcome video said, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, we know God will meet you here today. Amen. I'm excited about our spiritual tea today. I'm going to spill all the spiritual tea on starting the process of eliminating our spiritual liability using the financial debt snowball process. So let's grab our tea and begin. Let's begin with a prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to bless the church in this place. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the doubting find faith and the content be awakened. Here may the tempted find help and the sorrowful find comfort. Here may the believer be encouraged and the lost find salvation. Forgive our sins and cleanse our hearts. Inhabit our praises as we worship and speak to us through your word. All in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today I'll be reading from some different scriptures. When we start talking about spiritual debts, we need the power of scripture. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Exodus chapter 14 verses 13 through 15. And Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 through 13. I provided a reference slide as well to make it easier. While you find the verses, a couple of key items. Number one. As I go through the sermon, you will see slides with key bullet points to make taking notes and journaling easier for you. Bible journaling and receiving the word are so comforting. I mean, personally, for me, it replaced one of the spiritual debts I'll be going over today, and that's worrying. Amen. Number two. Let's take a moment to reflect on our past week and give God praise and worship. Because no matter how hard the test was, we made it. I know for me that reoccurring spiritual liability known as discouragement started to seep in slowly. But I took it to God who helped me strategize my way. Some of you experienced the toughest week. But if you take a moment to reflect somewhere along your path, God carried you. Remember Test turns into testimony, and the mess in your hot mess turns into a message. Praise him. He is good. Amen. Let's start with some financial terms. The debt snowball method is a debt reduction strategy. It's where one who owes on multiple accounts pays off the accounts starting with the smallest balances first, while at the same time, pay the minimum payment on the larger debts. Once the smallest debt is paid off, one proceeds to the next and so on and so on, gradually moving to the lower ones later. So picture a snowball rolling down a hill at high speed. It starts small, but with each turn down the hill, it adds another layer of snow growing larger and larger and gaining momentum. By the time the snowball reaches the bottom of the hill, it looks more like a boulder than a ball. This is the theory applied to paying off debt with the snowball method. You'll start small with focus intensity and over time you gain momentum. This method is also known to change your financial behavior. Are you still with me? Okay, great. Now, how can we apply this to our spiritual planning? Well, we need to start on our smaller spiritual debts with the same focus intensity to gain momentum to then focus on the larger spiritual debts. We also need to change our spiritual behavior. As explained in my previous sermons, spiritual debt is one of our spiritual liabilities, those negative key points that we need to eliminate. I spoke about reoccurring spiritual debt, discouragement, 
Remember? It's that reoccurring spiritual debt that you dread each time it comes. Another reoccurring debt is worry. Yes, worry and anxiety. See, worry is one of those smaller debts that you can begin to slowly eliminate to help you gain momentum to tackle those bigger spiritual debts. Amen. Believe me, I need to listen to this sermon over and over. See, for me, worrying was almost my security blanket when growing up. And as I grew older, I felt like I still needed to worry about the past, present, and future issues. For so many years, it was my security blanket. Funny story. I'm not a night owl, so to speak, which is the total opposite for my husband. I mean, once he hits the pillow, it's night-night time for him. I can stay up until the late hours worrying about things that, honestly, I needed to either let go or it was out of my control or it will never even happen anyway. I read a statistic from a study over 500 years ago. 85% of our worries never even happen. Crazy, right? Worry is like a Pandora's box. It generates many complicated problems. Worry is unfaithful. Remember, the nature of faith is simply a matter of trust. And if we worry, we can't trust. If we trust, we can't worry. Make a note. Worry and faith do not mix. We need to deduct spiritual debt, which is worry, from our spiritual revenue, such as faith. Worry is also a thief. It will rob us of quality of life and our peace. Worry places our focus more on our problems rather than on God. Worry corrodes and corrupts the mind, removes our focus. It disconnects and disengages us from God. According to Dr. Charles Mayo, worry affects the circulation, the heart, the glands, the whole nervous system. I remember when my kids graduated from high school and were preparing to go to college. That summer, I went to the hospital for extreme chest pains. I thought, honestly, I was having a heart attack. After several tests and imaging, I met with the cardiologist who asked me, was I stressed? I thought for a second and said, no, I don't feel stressed. He told me of a story of how one of his patients came to him with unexplainable pain that made his arm go numb. The man was extremely overworked and stressed. His body was telling him that he was stressed. The doctor then told me, although you may think you are not stressed, unexplainable pains are signs that your body is feeling the opposite. According to the Bureau of Standards, a dense fog covering seven city blocks to a depth of 100 feet calculates less than one glass of water. Technically, all that fog would not even fill up a glass. Our worries are similar to dense fog. It clouds our mind, consumes our thoughts, and in actuality, the actual size of our worry could probably fit in a single cup. How can we begin to start the spiritual debt snowball method? Well, number one, we need to take the first step that's called constructive action. When the Israelites reached the Red Sea, they heard the distant approach of the Egyptian chariots and were extremely anxious and worried. I mean, can you imagine the anxiety and the worry in them? But the waters parted and they had a way to make their escape. But if the Israelites hadn't taken the first step out of Egypt, they would never have crossed the sea. Just like if David had taken the first step onto the battlefield, he would not have defeated Goliath. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, 
let your requests be made known to God. Jesus is saying to those listening, key word, listening. He's saying you need to depend on God. God will take care of your every need. And if God will take care of even those most basic needs, God will see all the needs of your life. So don't worry. No, I did not say God will see to your every want. God will see to your every need. Okay. Number two, let go and let God. I continuously have spiritual struggles with that particular constructive action. It's easier to say it than to do it at times. Exodus chapter 14 verses 14 says, The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Meaning, you shall be silent and trust in God's blueprints. Sometimes our spiritual debts will make us cry out to God. This is fear leading us to pray. At times, those debts will bring us to our knees. Going back to the Israelites and Moses, as they began to flee Egypt, they began to question Moses and his constructive actions. But in verse 13, Moses says, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation. Another key word, salvation. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Salvation means God will deliver us from ruin. Let these debts quicken our prayers, but not silence our faith. Amen. First 15 begins with the Lord asking Moses, why do you cry to me? See, Moses' silent prayers of faith prevailed more than the Israelites' cries of fear. God is about to work for you. If God can bring you into the straits, that narrow passage of water, he will definitely find a way to bring you out. Amen? Number three, trust God's timing. I remember when I was six months pregnant with my twins and my doctor put me on bed rest because of the chances of early labor were very high. Needless to say, I was a week overdue. The last week we were at the hospital for our daily heart monitoring when the doctor checked in and she said she wanted to wait a couple of more days and then she'll induce labor because she was the only doctor on shift. I was thinking, well, honestly, that sucks. For the past three months, I had my mind and hopes just set that these kids were coming any day. And now I'm needing to wait still and continue to be uncomfortable. I mean, <laughs> come on. I was a week overdue with not just one baby, but two babies. <laughs> a couple of hours into the monitoring, baby B, which is my daughter, started to indicate that she was stressed. So they had to admit me anyway, but the plans were to induce me later on in the night because again, my doctor was the only doctor on shift. But funny enough, as soon as I was admitted, I began to have labor contractions. Looking back into my spiritual review mirror, as much as I wanted them to come for my comfort, it was all God's timing. I feel that that was his plan. The longer time allowed my daughter more time to grow. See, initially she was estimated to be six pounds, but when she was born, she weighed 4.8 pounds. The head of pediatrics said, usually she would have been considered premature due to her weight, but her lungs were fully developed as if she was six pounds. Again, God provides you what you need, not what you want. Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 through 13 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Amen. Number four, faith. 
Faith seldom grows strong by instant gratification. Faith grows stronger through spiritual struggles. In Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 through 28, it tells a story of a young Jewish woman who had a demon possessed daughter. When the woman asked Jesus for help, Jesus didn't say a word to her at first. As she persisted, he told her that his first priority was to save lost Jews. Each time when Jesus told her no, she persisted more because she was confident in her faith and believed in his salvation. Finally, Jesus was pleased with her faith and persistence. He turned to her and said, woman, you have great faith. He said, your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. If he engages you in spiritual struggles, he also supplies you the strength to overcome. The Lord doesn't wrestle with you because he wants you to lose, but because he wants to tell you at the end of the struggle what he said to that woman. You have great faith. Your action items for this week is first and foremost, give praise. Then begin the spiritual debt snowball method. Start eliminating the smaller spiritual debts, the worries and the discouragement. Then proceed to number two, let go and let God. Believe me, when I tell you these are my action items as well, you will not be alone. Amen. I read a quote by E. Stanley Jones. Worry is the interest we pay on tomorrow's troubles. Fun spiritual fact. The word pray appears in the King James Version 313 times. Thank you for joining me today. I truly appreciate you. I look forward to the next time. You will be abundantly blessed this week because you have God's un unconditional love. He will carry you. I like to close with the prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be sure to visit our website at afg-ministry.com. Our website is a spiritual wealth of resources, such as our prayer room. Each Wednesday night, we pray over all prayer requests. The power of prayer is intense, amen? We also post our sermons as well as our prayer calendar, and I would love for you to join us for scheduled readings. Our online boutique offers handcrafted items made with God's love, such as this one. And what's awesome about our online boutique, a large percentage of all of our sale proceeds are contributed to our outreach program. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was such a pleasure. And I truly look forward to our next week spiritual tea together, <laughs> so to speak. Thank you. And I hope you guys have a very, very blessed week.